I personally haven't been in a band in 13 years, so, and when I think about my life and my career, I don't think any of the bands that I worked with really influenced me as far as what I do and how I write. You know, even the first band I was in, I was 21, it was already an established band, and I came in and I was really brought in not only as a guitar player, but as a writer, so I was just kind of being me within the realm of that. Um, when I played Mr. Big, I didn't really change much at all. I just kind of got in with them and, and was myself in the context. So I don't feel like me personally that my style was changed that much from any of the bands. You know, maybe when I played with Stanley Clark, I had a different influence because that was more of a jazz thing, but you know, I was already kind of playing that kind of way anyway. So. I don't look at it that way. I think my influences personally came out of stuff that happened when I was a kid. My records that I, that were in my house that my, my parents had, you know. And there was a lot of soul records, R&B records, but then also the classic rock records. And I think that's where my main influence kind of came from stylistically. But it's not something I even think about because now it's like, just kind of do what I do and it happens. <laughs> I, um, I've been in a bunch of bands through the years, of course. I think it was more the time of my life that I was in those bands that mattered more than the band. When I was really young, I was in a band in Buffalo, New York, and I was experimenting, and I didn't know much of anything, so I just kind of made it up as I went along. Later on, when I got into some more successful bands, there was a different time of my life. I lived in Los Angeles then, and now when I, when I get, when it became successful, so things changed there. So I guess there's, to some degree, probably unknown to me, some intangible uh, influence that occurs. Of course, playing with David Lee Roth, that was a, that was a huge thing. I, I'd be foolish not to mention that that uh, didn't have some effect on me. But not so much musically as it was just to see, just to be around, go from nothing in Buffalo, New York, to uh, you know, uh, within 24 hours having paparazzi follow me and Dave around, you know, so that was a, that was a, a very uh, sharp learning curve. And uh, that, was a, that was a big thing for me. And I, I, it was like getting a PhD in showbiz, uh, working with Dave. So that was, a, that was a huge help, but not so much musically, you know, and I still, I, I'm, I'm very glad what I learned from him is, it still helps me to this day and to understand this business and how it works. But uh, more, more, I think it's more the time, times of my life than anything else. Well, I think um, my situation is, I guess, very different from Billy and Richie's because I was in one band for 25 years. This, this music is straight ahead and it's more from the soul. And, uh, you know, I, I think people come see the Winery Dogs and I think that's what makes this band stand out is because it's all about the songs and the vocals first and foremost and the musicianship is kind of the icing on the cake whereas with other bands i've been a part of um, it was all about the musicianship but people couldn't really latch on to the songs or the vocals so i think this band um, i think that's why people react so strongly to this band and th this band's appeal is so broad because um, yes it's got this really great musicianship that, that people can be impressed by and, and watch and be entertained by, but at the end of the day, it's all about the song, and every song in the, from the Winery Dogs is, is memorable and it's got hooks and riffs that are, you know, that latch on to you, so I think that's a, a big difference from any of the things I've done in the past. Mm -hmm.